Welcome, Warriors, to Volume 3 of WHS TV. I'm your host, Jacob Murdoch. I'm Dylan Konecki. And I'm Nick Sturgill. This week, we take a look at the newly coached varsity wrestling team and the challenges they face with COVID. <laughs> Next, we learn about a club that started from a hobby of building railroads and how you can get involved. And lastly, we follow the fight for sports to return in Michigan and how it's affected the athletes. All this and more on WHS TV. Our wrestling team has gone through a lot of changes this season. From a new coaching staff to COVID restrictions, the Warriors look to have a successful season. WHS TV reporters Nick Sturgill, Dylan Konecki, and Jacob Murdoch have the story. First year varsity wrestling coach Jeremy Brandt explains how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected this wrestling season. So uh, we were supposed to start in November. We've had I think six restarts. Hygiene is always of utmost importance. Uh, they shower as soon as they can. Wrestlers have to wrestle with masks on during practice. Uh, for competitions, we actually are in the testing program, so they'll be tested before uh, each match. But when it comes to planning the competitions, there's been some complications. The planning around finding competitions uh, is very challenging with uh, a lot of schools don't necessarily want to expose themselves to risks. Uh, so scheduling has been pretty difficult. Uh, we do what we can to uh, get the highest competition we can for uh, our wrestlers. Last week, the governor announced that winter sports will continue. Longtime wrestler Marcelo Luna and Patrick Riker explained the challenges that come with wrestling during a pandemic. Start off our seasons, they're a lot shorter. We only got like two months compared to like four, five almost. And these masks, they play a big role on us. It's hard to breathe during like conditioning and while we're wrestling. And we gotta take showers after every match and wear a new singlet. And also the coaching staff is different. Uh, we don't got Rudy anymore. There's not the same, the whole atmosphere. Um, I'm glad that Pete and Joe came back. And what I learned though is that we gotta do, we gotta make do with the best we got and work hard as hard as we can. The Warriors meet every Thursday for the next five weeks. While there is no in-person attendance, the Warriors could use your support. Coach Brand gives some good ways to support the Warrior wrestling team. Um, supporting the wrestlers when you see them is always helpful. When, uh, when they know that they have support behind them, it, it, uh, it helps get them through the season. Dylan Konecki and Jacob Murdick, this is Nick Sturgill reporting for WHS-TV. Wow, that was some great storytelling from those guys. Agreed. Now let's explore how a simple hobby can turn into a fun club for people with similar interests. WHS TV staff members Matthew King and Brandon Williams have the story. It looks real from a certain angle, doesn't it? These are actually scale model trains at the Redford Model Railroad Club in Inkster, Michigan. We learn a little bit about the hobby of model railroading. The simple answer is building um, a railroad in miniature, but there's some technical things. You have to have some understanding of how electricity works, and then there's architectural. I mean, you just sort of have to have some feeling for, for how the real world goes together. Now when outsiders of the hobby hear the name model railroading, most will think of the miniature train in a store's display case. Lionel trains are stationary models. While these are very common assumptions, there are key differences, most of which are pretty clear. Detail. The detailing on the, the models themselves. As enjoyable as it is from spectating, it takes one to build, operate, and maintain a model railroad, especially at places like these. The club requires money to operate. Uh, we own our own building and it requires maintenance, and building and maintaining the layout costs money. So we need a revenue stream, and one of them is the collection of dues. The other is we sell railroad cars to advertisers who pay us to put their their logo on a boxcar that we run uh, during our opening.
out. Mm -hmm. Even with so much to offer, it's ever so slowly fading away. There are other things that occupy young people's time, and it requires a whole lot of time. So I think people who are interested in the hobby of ache are older, and they're simply going away. If you are ever curious about this hobby, or know someone who is looking into a new one, try it. You can do it too. But start off small and visit the Redford Model Railroad Club website for more information. For Matthew King, I'm Brandon Williams, reporting for WA. Brad went to the single. Wow, I love trains. Look, so much fun. They sure do. I might want to get involved with the club someday. Same here. In our final story, we learn about how the fight for sports to return has made a positive impact in the lives of students and parents. WHS staff members Kate Wagenthal and Marty Silva Vasquez have the story. Hundreds of people at the state capitol today with one message. Since the beginning of the pandemic, student athletes have dealt with shutdowns, restrictions, and obstacles. Due to this, an organization called Let Them Play was formed with the sole goal of getting student athletes playing their respective sports once again. It's hard on us for like mental state and everything. I hope that our voices don't fall on deaf ears. The kids who like stay in the ghettos and all of that creates a way out for them. You're getting your season back. The group's mission was accomplished when the restrictions were lifted for winter sports on February 4th, 2021. Governor Whitmer allowed for sports to continue full on starting on February 8th as long as safety protocols are followed. Today, DHHS is issuing an epidemic order to allow in-person practice and competitions for sports leagues starting on Monday, February 8th. Trenton varsity coach and Woodhaven High School teacher, James Babiak, gives firsthand insight on how his student athletes were originally affected by the COVID restrictions. I think that it's important for students for their mental aspect to be able to play sports. I think that it brings them closer to school, closer to their peers, gets their mind off of all the stuff going on in the world today. Yeah, I think everyone's a lot happier, everyone's excited to be back. I think school's easier for them now too. With the restrictions now being released, students have shown more positive attitudes both in the classroom and at practice. Now that sports have resumed, student athletes can get back to doing what they love. For Kate Wagatha, I'm Marisela Vasquez reporting for WHS-TV. As a wrestler, I'm excited to get back into sports. Thanks for tuning in to Volume 3 at WHS-TV. We'd like to thank our staff for creating such amazing videos this week. Tune in the next week for Volume 4 at WHS-TV.